Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be doing another little painting on this canvas. I think I got this at Aldi. I've had it for quite a while. Um, I just never got around to, to doing it. It's been sitting here waiting for me for a long time. This is a little underwater scene. You can see the bubbles here. Some are bigger than others. Little, big bubbles, smaller bubbles. And we have some fish, two fish, a seahorse. Very cute. We have some plants. There's stuff growing on the bottom of the ocean. A happy little star. And a crab. Okay. Now, when you buy this kit, it comes with this piece that's in, um, nested into the back of the canvas frame. And it has this part. This is where the paints were. I already took them out. Looks like a little flower. You have one, two, three, four, five sections where you can put the paints. And then we have this section in the middle if you wanted to combine some paints, mix them, and make a different color, you could do that. And they give you one paintbrush. So what you would normally do, you could use the same one over and over. And then you rinse it in a, I just have a little cup of water here. And like Bob Ross, I have my paper towel. But um, sometimes I like to use different types of brushes. So it's cool that they do give you one. But I happen to have some here. Now, these are some that I've used many times before. My kids used to like to do stuff like this when they were younger, especially my younger son, but they've, they've both kind of outgrown it, so they don't really mess with this stuff anymore. I have some paints and, and different paint brushes, and they don't really, they haven't done anything with them in a long time. So, um, I want to look in here and see what kind of brushes we have. These are some Crayola brushes, and they're probably kind of stiff because I was lazy the last time I used them and I didn't rinse them out too well. I'm mainly interested in sort of a, like a liner brush. This blue one here is good. These, I think these brushes have um, slightly better quality bristles. The ones on this brush kind of stick out, which can mess up your details. I want to use, I keep this one, keep that one out, keep that one out, and we'll keep that one out. And I'm looking for kind of a detail brush. Let's see if this would work. All I have to do is just kind of manipulate the bristles a little bit. And dip in a little water. That'll help. Well, in theory, it would help. <laughs> I can scratch the paint onto the canvas. It might be time to buy some new brushes. <laughs> These are just some little cheap brushes I got quite a while ago. I've had them for a long time. There we go. That softened it up. Perfect. So we have this nice, kind of a fine point brush. One that's a little bit bigger. I don't want to use a great big brush, honestly, because really none of these areas are too big. What we could do is, we could use the blue for the background, if there's enough. I don't know that there is enough. What colors do we have? We have green, and so you don't get a lot of, you don't get a lot of each color, but that's okay and blue. These are acrylic paints. Red, yellow, and white, which is kind of silly because the canvas is already white. It's like, okay, I was just going to leave the white areas, like the bubbles. I was just going to leave them like they are. I don't really need this. I may put it in here anyway. So let's see how this paint works. 
I always have backup paint because a lot of times you will get these kits and these paints have dried out. But let's see. Oh, that's disappointing. Well, I got a little bit out. You have to really squeeze hard to get it out. That's what she said. I'm saving you the trouble. Now here's a green one. Put it next to the red, the yellow. Ooh, there's more of the green. That's odd. But yeah, I have some, um, I have some Crayola paints, so if this isn't enough, that's not a problem. And red. And blue. But if, if I want to do all of this, I don't think that's going to be enough, and I would like it to all be the same color. Let me go grab my blue paint. Okay, so I grabbed this little container of blue Crayola paint. This is just a washable paint. And I also, while I was at it, I got an orange one and a purple one, too. That way we'll have a little bit more variety in what we do here. I don't really know where to put these. I'm just going to stick them over here. <laughs> that way, I, hopefully, I won't forget about them. Okay. So, where should we start? I want to do I want to do all the little animals and plants and then do this part. What about this area here? You know what? We could do that in in brown. And I just happen to have a brown one too. There. I just grabbed that one. Yeah, these are, these are like brand new. I bought these and nobody really used them. Okay, so we could do this part in brown. And then, we'll, you know, we have the animals in different colors here. Let's start with the starfish. Let's do him in this. We'll see what this orange looks like. Looks kind of weird right now. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try the blue brush with this. And just kind of. Dab it in there like that. I don't want too much. And you just have to be careful going up to the edge there. I don't want to get it in his eyes. But I want the color to be uniform. I don't want it to be blotchy. I want it to be nice and uniform. Looks cute already, right between the eyes. Now I'm trying not to paint over the lines because it makes them look less dark. Go right up to the edge, right up there. It's moving right along, isn't it? And we'll come down this way. A little gloop, glop of paint right there. I'm just going to pull that down and spread it out there. That's good. There's the starfish. That's nice. Okay. Um... Do we want to do anything else in orange? How about we do the stop fin? I already have it on the brush. Might as well. I'm probably going to try the liner brush to get 
get that little point. Let's see if I can make a point with this brush. Oh, maybe. I don't want to mess it up. Just a little bit right there. Oh, that got And you just bring it down. Look at that really good. And we could do, let's make the orange as well. Just have to be careful of that middle part. I probably should have used the liner brush for that. <laughs> there. That was okay. Now we'll put this away for the moment. Rinse the brush. I'm not going to beat the devil out of it. It'd probably fall apart. I'll just wipe it on a towel, a paper towel. Now we pick our next color. <laughs> Let's do purple. I'm just going for all of these Crayolas. Oh, again, I'm going to try the, the blue brush. I want to do this in blue. I want it to be blue. Let's do this part of the fish in purple. Let's see how this looks. Now we're going to do that dorsal fin in a different color. I don't know what yet. a big area. <laughs> Coming down to the end of the tail. We'll do the tail fin in a different color too. I think that's a pretty color. <laughs> okay. I, had a, I have a little bit of a dry cough, and it's irritated my voice. I do apologize. It may sound a little different. I've had this dry cough. It's getting on my nerves. I spent quite a bit of time outside today, and I think it irritated my allergies. Let's see. I want to spread this out a little bit here. This color. Like that. Get it right up to the edge. And bring it down. not as dark over here, is it? <laughs> Let's get some more. That's right there. Okay. We'll get some more back here, too. I like that darker color. It looks good. to deal with a hornet nest. Some hornets built a nest in the wall 
behind one of my light fixtures outside. And I got to uh, deal with that situation today. And I was also, I also had some work done on my house. And it ended up taking a lot longer than they thought it would. This was supposed to be like a three hour job and it took all day and it's still not done. <laughs> There were some problems that were, that came up that were not expected. So the work was mainly outdoors and I spent quite a bit of time out there, you know, seeing what was going on and answering questions about how to handle the situation that <laughs> came up. So, um, oops, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. So I've spent most of my day out, in and out of um, the great outdoors. And all of the great myrtles are blooming right now and I have trouble around something to do with the great myrtles. They mess me up. And it gives me a little cough. I'm not sick or anything, it's just a, an annoying cough. Look at that little nose, that's cute. Yeah, that's why my voice suddenly sounds different. I just had a crazy coughing fit. I'm better now. So there's our little fish. Our little purple fish. Okay. Anything else we want to do in purple? We could give the crab purple eyes. I'm going to try the liner brush for that. And we'll dry it off again on the towel, the paper towel. Alright, now let's try this little purple liner brush. See how this works. Oh, that's better. And the bristles are kind of stiff. <clears throat> they make a scratchy sound. There's one. Oh, this one works a lot better for these eyes. Seems like every time I have any work done at my house, it starts out simple and then it blows up into a convoluted mess. Oh, and that's what happened today. I wasn't planning on having to spend most of my day dealing with it. It was supposed to be about a three hour thing. Kind of like Gilligan's Island, you know, a three hour tour and they ended up stuck there forever. That's kind of what, that's what it was like. Let's do purple for the uh, seahorse too. So they're gonna have to come back either tomorrow or one day next week and uh, finish the work. Hopefully it won't be too much more. I think we've blown way past <laughs> the estimate I was given for this work. Yeah, I think we Okay, but it's, it's not their fault. It's, it wasn't anything they did wrong. It was legitimately just that bad. 
This crab here, what color should he be? I think I want to do. Should I do this fin in orange too? I don't know. Let's make the crab green. <laughs> Why not? That's trippy. Now you have to be really careful not to overlap the purple or the lines too much. You want to keep the some definition, oops, <laughs> some definition in there. A little happy accident right there, okay. We're coming all the way down to the smile. Just come around this way. And we have to go up this way too. Don't forget this part. Up and over. Just nice and easy like that. And we're going to come around this way. Get him right up to that edge. I would use the liner brush more, but like Bob said, I'm lazy. <laughs> mm. I'll just use this brush for everything that I can. I think the crab looks cute in green myself. Now he's a basically a crab ball. We gotta do his legs. <clears throat> and his little pinchers here. So yeah, I had to uh, deal with a hornet nest today. That was that was a lot of fun. This has been a very frustrating day. I'm telling you, everything I've tried to do today has just ended up being a nightmare. You know what I did? Two months ago, I mailed a package to a subscriber in the Netherlands, a very nice lady. And um, she said that she didn't have all the varieties of nail polish that we have here. And she offered to pay me to send her some. I said, no, I'll, you know, I'll do. I'll just send them to you. You don't need to give me any money. I'll just send them to you. And I even made a video of all the bottles. Well, anyway, I, um, I took the package to a post office. Um, not the one I normally go to, but a different one. And was told that you can mail nail polish internationally. And it's not considered hazardous or potentially flammable or anything it was okay to mail it, but because it was not on the list of prohibited items. <clears throat> so I paid for international shipping. I think it was $40. And, um, I thought I was done. Well, she never got the package. And Tuesday, it came back to me. 
And I found out, no, you can't mail these. You can't mail nail polish internationally. It's prohibited. I said, well, then why was I told that I could? And they said, I don't know. But you can't. So anyway, I, I dealt with that today, and that's what I did earlier this morning. I went to the post office to try to sort that out, but I didn't get very far. Um, so now I do have the package back, and I'm going to try, I guess, to mail it either... I'm going to try UPS and see if they can do it ground shipping. The post office would not send it ground, but I was told to check with UPS or FedEx that they might send it ground shipping. But they don't ship it by air either, which is fine. I mean, I understand that. <clears throat> totally understand that. But I, it is a little frustrating that I spent money to ship it when I thought it was okay because they said it was and uh, then come to find out no it's actually not so sorry anyway there was that and then there was the work done at the house that I was really glad to get done and I was looking forward to getting it done and then come to find out oh dear you know what we got into the middle of it, and here is an issue we found. Come see. What do you want us to do? Like, oh my god. Why can nothing be simple? So instead of fixing one thing, now we're fixing <laughs> three things. So, yeah, it's very frustrating. It's been this, my whole day has been like that. But look at our crab. He looks happy. He says, I don't give two craps about your stupid package or your house. Stop talking about it. <laughs> All that's over. The day is done. Now it's time to relax and forget about it. And he's right. I need to just forget about it for now. Okay, so there's that. Um... I also want to, oh, I also want to do these in green. I forgot about that. I cleaned that brush for nothing. Let's, um, let's do these. This is the only green I have handy at the moment. We're just going to do these in green. I'm starting in the corners, or these little edges here. Right where it joins the little stem. And working my way out. Here's one. And then we'll do another one. There we go. Those go pretty fast. We'll do this one up here. I'm going to start on the outer part on this one, I think. Right up here. Next to the line. But trying not to go over that line. Very careful. Very gentle. Right down to here. Look at that. That's nice. And the next one. That's pretty, I think. That's a very calming green color. There. That's better. And another one here. Oh, man. Oops. A little 
there's that one. And we have two more. I guess maybe I should have done the crab in another color, but I don't care. I still like it in green. I've never seen a green crab. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to cover that up with blue. I don't care. Okay. Next. This is the last leaf. And then we'll be done with the green. Here we go. Our water is starting to look interesting. <laughs> Try their paintbrush, see what it does. Oh, it's stiff. It's really stiff. I don't like it. <laughs> Yikes. You can't really do any detail with this. I mean, I can get the larger areas, but. I'm painting with a potato or something. That is the most unfortunate. I am retiring that brush. Going back to the blue one. That red one is a nightmare. Oh, that's better. There we go. Much softer. There we go. Look at that. Right up to the edge. Very nice. Ooh, we can get into this part. There's that fin. Now we'll fix this one up. I'm just sort of distributing the paint that's already there around a little. again for the tail. Ooh, I like that red. It's pretty. And the dorsal fin up here. Just come around the edges of that. That red is so rich. I love it. Let's do them all in red. Of course, we have this up here. 
which I would normally paint blue but you know what I have dark blue I have this one blue and I have another one I think that's darker we could use that for the top there okay what else should we do I want to do this whole area in red too I really love this red it's so pretty That looks nice. this end part here, this little snout or whatever the part I pull the hook out of I went surf fishing a few times I didn't really like it though I caught a flounder that was interesting that's a weird looking fish I tell you I've always wanted to try deep sea fishing, but I've never done it. Just fishing in a regular old pond. That suits me better. Surf fishing was strange. I didn't like it. It's hard to describe, but I, I don't know. I, I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm used to reading the water and the ripples on the surface of the water. I can watch those and get a feel for what's, what's under there what's going on with the ocean you're watching the surf you can't do that the water's never still <laughs> it was throwing me off there okay that's a lot of red um let me think oh I wanted to do oh wait a minute I can't do the seahorse in blue because the water is going to be blue Okay, we'll do the seahorse in yellow then. How about yellow? The yellow is really thick for some reason. Oh, it's it's drying out. That's why it's so thick. It's uh, the consistency is kind of weird. Yeah, it's thicker than the others. But we'll do the best we can with it, I guess. A yellow seahorse, that's funny. I don't know why. like a little alien or something. His, his head kind of reminds me of Ultraman, if you ever watched that. I used to love that show when I was a kid. I 
I would irritate my brother by dancing around the living room to the theme song. <laughs> dance around like a maniac. He hated it when I'd do that because I'd, I'd just dance around and around in front of the TV. <laughs> He'd tell me to move. I'd say, I am moving, look. <laughs> I was a very annoying... I was an annoying kid. I don't think I got all the red out of this brush. I don't care. Happy accidents. That's all. God, this paint is gloopy. I should have added a few drops of water to it. You know, it's really been one of those days where <laughs> so many things have not worked out like they were supposed to that I just can't bring myself to worry about it. <laughs> you really have to pick your battles. Oops. And that is not one I care to engage in. Oh, I also have a wasp nest. But it's way up on, on, on the little overhang of the roof. And it's so high up I can't reach it without a ladder. So I'm going to have to get my ladder out and address them <laughs> with a can of spray. I am not in the mood to do it tonight. I already took care of one hornet nest. I just don't want to deal with it. Here, look at the unicorn, he's cool. Now I want to take the liner brush. Ooh, that's interesting. Pretty color. I want to take that purple liner brush and get a little bit of that yellow paint and do the eyes of this little guy right here yellow, if I can. Oh, it's splotchy. Just tell everybody it's cutting edge eyeshadow or something. There. There he is. Alright. a bit of this dark blue over here that came with the kit. Um, it's not the same color as I want to do the water with, so we could use it for other stuff. I could have done the seahorse in that dark blue. Why did I think of that? Well, it's fine. We'll use it on this fish. No big deal. That's a pretty, that's a really pretty blue. Look at that. Like a midnight blue. I don't think it's nice. a really nice color. Really, really nice. Let's do this one too. There. I know it's a goofy combination of colors, but I like it.
a little bit more up around that way. There. Oh, look at that. that that's a nice combination. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> I could try. I don't think there's enough here to do the sky from this color, but that's okay. Let's do this this part down here we're going to do in brown. Wish I have a little Crayola little container of brown paint right here. And I'm just gonna, I could probably use a bigger brush, but I'm just gonna use this one since I have it in my hand. And like Bob would say, you could put it on with a paint roller right here. It really doesn't matter. In fact, the more the color varies, I think the better it looks. Like if it's not a uniform brown or whatever. It doesn't matter. Tweet around these little feet here. It's not quite as dark when you put it on. It looks like pudding. <laughs> it's like chocolate pudding. Oops. <laughs> Got a little bit down there. way. Just pull it down like that. And then go back across to kind of even it out. Being careful not to overlap the little green crab legs. Right up to the little starfish. And careful not to overlap the little plant. And again, I'm leaving some brush strokes in there to give it a little texture, a little bit of a different looking landscape. First, I'm going to come up here and fill in. And then come back over, going this way. But I want to get that initial coat of paint first. That's looking good. I think it looks good. Right up to the edge. And then we're going to get it right up to this little plant. The edge of the starfish over here. Right along the edge there. And right up next to this plant. How's that? How's it good? I like it. Okay, I think we're done with the brown. <clears throat> okay, I'll draw that. I'm 
might need a bigger brush for some of this area. That's going to be difficult. Let's check and see if I have anything in this bag that will work. Well, this one is a little bit bigger. This one here. All right, we'll add some, get the blue. And we're gonna go ahead, oh, I didn't do his eye. Uh, I didn't do, well, I'll come back to it. I'm ready to do this now. We'll see how this brush does. Oh, that's a nice color. I really like it. It's kind of a turquoise color. Right now, we're just doing the big um, open areas just to get some paint in there and distribute it a little. We're not going to leave it like this. I'm just sort of laying in a little color here. All the way around my little Ultraman seahorse. We're going to leave those plain. I don't see a need for any white paint. I mean, they're already white. I've always kind of wanted to try one of those uh, little wine and wine and design workshop things where you go in and you drink wine and you paint a picture. Because <laughs> I don't ever drink and I just wonder if I had a few glasses of wine and then you handed me a canvas and some paint, I just wonder what I would come up with. <laughs> I would pay good money to do that. <laughs> Seriously. I've never done it. Oops, that's a lot. <laughs> Again, we're just laying some color in here. this big brush. <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> and now we're going to come back with the little blue brush to do some detail work. We have lots of paint just mm -hmm. freely floating on this canvas that we can use. Get right up to that edge. And pull it down. And again, if the color isn't uniform, I think that actually makes it look better. Just like the brown. Because if you've ever seen underwater in the ocean, it's, it's not all the same color. It's all different. Life would be boring if it were all the same. I don't want everything to be the same. Okay, right up to that wave right there. <laughs> Little peak 
weeks or a challenge. It's a little bit too much, so I spread it out a little. And we, I think we are going to have to come back with a liner brush and get a lot of this. Oh yeah. the amount of time it's taking me to do this, Bob could have painted <laughs> two really amazing things to like two whole paintings. I can almost hear his ghost chiding me for saying that. <laughs> it's not about the time, it's about the quality and what you get out of it and how much you enjoy it. Don't worry about it. We call it the joy of painting, not the quantity of painting. Right up to the edge of the waves. Seahorse. That's cool. Let's come around these bubbles too. fish swimming in the water. These are some happy sea creatures. Look at them. Look how happy they are. I don't know that any of these eat one another. That may be why they're happy with each other. If a shark showed up, they'd probably change their, change their outlook a little bit. part of this happy little fish. this little fish, the purple and red one. He'll still need to do his eye. And let's come up this way.
Yes, why? Okay, we're coming right along. Let's come around this back side here of the seahorse. Don't want to forget this part. Look at that, that's gonna look good. <laughs> I like it. Come down this way. I think around these plants, I'm going to use the water brush for some of that. I think it would be easier. Of course, I keep saying that and I just <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Like we have this little area here around his mouth. Let's we'll see how good we can do with that. I think that turned out all right. Look at that.
this side. Awesome. Okay. I'm getting up close to the plant. Try not to get too close though. to the line and you just kind of scrub the paint in there like that in between the little legs here I'm just kind of moving the paintbrush to just kind of put a little bit of color in there And then we go under the crab, right down to the little floor there. And you come over here and tickle him in his little arm. He's cute. A little more. I'm, I'm dabbing it like this in my palette over here. <laughs> Just moving the color around. Right up next to these leaves, very carefully, and try not to go over the the line there. It's very careful. leaves down here. We just sort of scrub it in there. <laughs> this is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing all this. Around this leaf. But at least I got all the school shopping done for one of my kids today. That was so great. That was a great thing. We're going to look at the positive of today. I got that done. And we're going to look at all that separately. And it's just for fun. We're not going to debate anything. We're not going to get upset. We're not going to criticize anything. We're just going to enjoy looking at all the stuff I bought. And that's all we're going to do. I can promise you that. If you don't live in the United States, it may be an unfamiliar concept, but yes, we do provide 
a lot of school supplies for our public schools. And the private schools have to do with the charter schools, maybe not to the same extent, but yes, you are expected to provide some supplies. And that's just the way it is. And I don't really think there's any need to say any more about it than that. So every year, I get the school supply lists for my kids. I ask them individually, do you want to go with me when I buy your school supplies? And every year I get the same response. Nah, just get whatever. They really don't care what I buy. They have zero interest in it. Um, the only thing they're really picky about is their, their uh, backpack, their book bag that they use for school, which they always get to pick out every year, whether they go with me or we pick it out online or, or whatever. Um, they are always involved in that because they want to be, and I'm totally fine with it. You know, it's, it's fine. Um... My younger son has picked out one of his older bags, which kind of surprised me, but all of a sudden he's decided he likes it again. I don't know. He wants to use it, so I said, okay. You can if you want. It's all right with me. But no, they don't go with me when I go shopping for these school supplies because they just don't care. They just say, well, just get whatever I'm supposed to have. It's good enough for me. So they don't go with me because they don't care. It's not that they want to go and I won't let them. It's that they just don't care what I buy. They don't care what the folders look like. They don't care what the notebooks and binders look like. They have no interest at all. And they never have. I mean, even when they were really little, they didn't care. Didn't matter to them. As long as they had whatever they were supposed to have, that was good enough. Maybe some kids are really picky about their school supplies, but I guess I got lucky because I have two kids who genuinely don't care. <laughs> it's like, whatever. <laughs> They do help me unload the car when I get back with all this stuff, so that's nice. And yes, they do have work around the house. They have chores that they have to do every single day. I may not talk about it, but that doesn't mean they don't. They work, and they contribute to the household as far as, you know, keeping it clean and organized and, and all that. They are expected to do their part like it or not. There. We need to get this little spot here. I'm going to try to do it with this brush. I think I can do it. Oh yeah. There we go. Now we need to do the top. We've gone around the bubbles. Actually, before we do the top, let's get his eyeball. What should we do his eyeball? Um... Let's do, I want to do a little bit of green, and I'm going to try the liner brush. The green is nice. It's um, not clumpy at all. It's quite nice and liquidy, or whatever you want to call it. It's not goopy at all. slide this down a little bit here and I'm going to grab the dark blue and we'll see if we can do this song right up here. Alright, this is going to be our last color. Now this is a 
darker blue. See, it's kind of a royal blue. Let's try this great big brush again for the big areas and see how that works. I'm kind of curious to see this color. Oh, this brush is a nightmare. I picked up the wrong one. This is the wrong brush. It's not the one I meant to grab. I meant to grab this one. Oh, that's a nice color. Right up to the edge of that canvas. This is acrylic. If it were oil, I would take a clean brush and that white paint and try to use it like titanium white and put a little fluffy cloud in there, but with acrylic, I don't think that would work so well. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. But this is just Crayola washable paint. It's not oil paint. That's a nice color. It's a little darker. I mean, we could put it on a little thicker and make it even darker still. I've had so much fun doing this painting. I really have. I've enjoyed this. This has made my day better. It's ended on a, a nice note. Even though it looks like I'm going to be going to bed late. I don't care. painting. All that's left is to take that little liner brush and a little bright red and sign it. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to put a tiny M right there. And that's all I'm doing. So, there we have it. One completed happy little painting. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you again really soon.